for me when i was praying to the lord and asking the lord revelation about this point this sensitive topic personally abba said to me that your mouth is to continually 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 glorify me praise me worship me and for evangelization i have called you to pray in the midnight hours speak in tongues engage in spiritual warfare and intercede for the lost proverbs 13:3 says the one who guards his mouth protects his life the one who opens his lips for immoral talk or deed invites his own ruin and i mostly speak out of the amplified versions isaiah 6 verses 5 and 7 the amplified version says and i said woe is me for i am lost for i am a man of unclean lips and mouth and i dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips and mouth and then one of the seraphim flew to me and in his hand was a glowing coal that he had taken with the tongs from the altar and he touched my mouth to purify me psalms 141 verses 3 said set a guard o lord over my mouth keep a watch over the doors of my lips Brothers and sisters with the same mouth that you continuously worship the Lord Jesus you cannot suck you cannot lick you cannot stimulate and you cannot pleasure your husband's private organ animals do that human beings do not do that who deceived you brothers and sisters and told you that that was acceptable to a holy god who charges his angels with errors in a holy covenantal marriage the sexual intercourse is also considered covenantal and holy your mouth is not meant for your spouse's private area but your mouth is meant for your spouse's mouth according to song of songs verses 1 and 2 and your private area is meant for your husband's private area genesis chapter 4 verses 1 there is mouth to mouth and private area to private area or in a more graphic manner it would be the male penis into the female vagina of his wife or male organ to the female organ and nowhere else nothing demonic and the unholy acts practiced in the marine world for witchcraft will enter my kingdom above father clearly says all unholy ways of engaging in sexual intimacy from the kama sutra are demonic lustful positions there is no change in the way i originally created sex to be it was and is the same is what the lord says Dear brethren every sexual intercourse position that is not a traditional missionary position comes from the Kama Sutra that was originally written in Sanskrit between 400 BC and 300 BC Vatsyayana the demonic cultish guru was shown these positions by demons in the marine world and Christians have blindly adopted them into their bedrooms and their holy bed and are performing demonic sexual positions invoking demonic sexual incantations and demonic portals demonic occultic stances and being dragged into the marine world and being trapped viewers discretion advised i'm going to get even more graphic please stop if you're already offended if you're mad that's good but if you're hurt or if you are repulsed by it please stop my beloved brother My brothers let me talk to you you cannot continually praise the holy son of god who was barbarically scourged for your sins and your wife's sins with a mouthful of vaginal fluids vaginal bacteria traces of uric acid and urea after giving her oral sex you cannot do that My beloved sister in Christ you cannot continually praise the holy son of god the lord jesus christ who was barbarically scourged for you and the sins of your husband and with a mouthful of semen and penile bacteria and trace of urea and uric acid you cannot praise and evangelize the holy son of god Scientists reports that 64 percentage of cancers in the oral cavity, head, neck in the United States of America are caused by HPV, human papilloma virus, which is spread exclusively by oral sex. Oral sex is a major sexual health risk. Oral sex spreads STDs such as hepatitis and syphilis and cancers. A holy righteous God who is a consuming fire will never give his children a license to practice such abominable body defiling life threatening sexual acts according to romans 1 24 26 28 wherefore god also gave them upon to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves 
For this cause, God gave them up into wild affections for even their woman changed their natural use, that which is against nature. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now did you see why people say it's okay? People who are actively living a sinful life. Do you see why they say oral sex is okay? Because they are fulfilling scripture. The book of Romans we just read that God gives you into a reprobate mind where you ultimately say because of your rebellion disobedience and lustful pleasure than sacrifice god gives you over to a reprobate mind where you think this is okay and then you go on telling others it's okay because i am worshiping god i'm speaking in tongues miracles are happening in spite of me doing everything what you are calling sinful but the truth of the matter is the Lord gave them over to a reprobate mind. That is why they are saying, see, I can do all these miracles. I'm praying, I'm speaking in tongues, I'm fasting, but the Lord did not correct me and I, nothing has happened to me. But the truth is the Lord has given up on them. He has given them a reprobate mind because of their continuous sin, because of their continuous rebellion against the Holy God. There are thousands and thousands of souls in hell for performing these sinful acts on their spouses. Countless saints have been taken to heaven and hell and given specific revelation about sexual sins to warn God's holy people. We are running out of time, my beloved. Let us not be one among them. Some of the few references that the Lord has specifically asked me to share with his body, his bride is. Psalms 34 verses 1. I will praise the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That means all the time. All the time means even while sex, you should be in a position of praising God. You cannot suck your husband's private organ or your wife's private organ and continually praise God. Psalm 71, 8. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day long. Psalm 66, 17. I cried to him with my mouth and he was extolled with my tongue. Hebrews 13, 15 says, through him then let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to our God that is the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. Leviticus 18 24 says do not defile yourselves by any of these things for by all these things the nations which I am casting out before you have become defiled. First Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 says but the Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably declares that in later times some will turn away from faith, paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons. Let me go into the topic of foreplay. Avoid the foreplay of the world. We Christians are not asked to do foreplay before having sex. And please, we are not talking about hugging or kissing lovingly, fondling, feeling your spouse's body, which all are permitted in the marriage bed to arouse your spouse if necessary. We are talking about demonic sexual foreplay. Please use discernment and fervent prayer to avoid falling in temptation or the enemy inflating anyone's imagination for the topic I'm going to talk about now. Sexual foreplay and or activities that borderlines foreplay or sex are some of the sinful activities included but are not limited to the following. So all of the things I'm going to tell you, not just sexual foreplay, but also borderlines other activities. They are considered absolutely abominable by the Lord and you will go to hellfire for engaging in such. So brothers and sisters, please use discernment. Don't feel hurt. I'm just trying to tell you it is better to know now and avoid falling in sexual temptations and lusts of the world and lust of the flesh and pride of life than going in hell and saying, man, I just wish I would have listened to Sister Sue. All eternity I'm doomed. No one to help. Do it right now, my brother. Do it right now, my sister. One minute of sexual pleasure is not worth of an eternity of hell. Strip teasing. Filthy, flirty messages sent to one's spouse. Talking dirty. Playing sex games. Sending nude pictures of oneself. Sending nude pictures of others. Sending nude pictures, that is photos, of one's private areas. Drawing nude pictures of each other. Playing lustful, carnal, secular music. 
like R. Kelly's music. Lighting aromatic sensual candles. Most of the candles, I believe if you have heard Brother Penegonde's channel, most of the candles are made from the marine world. It's just like perfume mixed with the rotten flesh of hell to seduce, to entice from the marine world, from Mommy Water's kingdom. And all of these components used in the candles are sensual using sensual oils flavored foods and flavored oils all are marine products they all are created by the marine world mixed with hellish components and that is the same thing with perfumes wearing sensual perfumes so for example i was telling my husband about aqua di Gio armani the second name for that uh, perfume is panty dropper that means satan has added into that fragrance the power of seduction and lust so much that when a man wears it a woman automatically drops her panties can you imagine the demonic connection that's one perfume my brothers and sisters think about all all of the seductive perfume that is manufactured in hell and that is one of the main reasons we say not to wear perfumes because you just don't know all the famous brands are sold out to the kingdom of darkness so completely avoid perfumes because they all are portals to the marine world they seduce you and seduce others it would be very dangerous especially when you're married and you're wearing something sensual to work or you are seducing uh, other women who are not submitted to the Lord Jesus. Let's continue. Using ice on body parts or body. Using wax on body or body parts. Using food on body parts. Drinking alcohol. Sensual dancing. Erotic massages that involves masturbation. Simple regular massages. You're giving your spouse a back rub or a neck rub. Things like that is fine. And see, again, let's use discretion here. Even if it's a simple massage and if a spouse want to engage in a sexual activity after a massage which was absolutely not involving masturbation, that is permitted. You have to use discretion to see that you are not using the demonic portal of masturbation. Next is lap dancing, pole dancing, taking Viagra before sex sexual activity taking any such sexual enhancement drugs including herbal supplements using breast creams using breast implants using piercing in private areas using mutual masturbation using masturbation while watching pornography watching pornography or sexual movies before sex or during sexual activity with one spouse Let's continue. Seductive dressing, use of sensual lingerie or heels, wearing satin, silk underwear, silk bedsheets. I think we already have discussed in our previous videos why satin and silk are portals to hell because you will see any seductive actress before a sex scene wearing satin and silk. So avoid those components. You wear linen. You use linen that the Israelites used. You don't use silk and satin and lace to entice your spouse. Most of those products are anyways created and manufactured by the Marine Kingdom. You lying on there is going to bring lustful demons, lustful thoughts in your mind and is going to have a portal into the Marine world. Role playing as sex slaves, carrying out one's fantasies, carrying out one's fetishes, any role playing before sex, any BDSM, physical or emotional abuse, spanking each other, taking sensual baths together in a tub, shower, pool. Remember, the matrimonial bed is where you do your act. You do not initiate sex or sensual baths in a tub or a pool that brings in marine spirits. Especially if you bring the water component, you are opening doors into the marine kingdom. All of the and any sex toys, kinking toys, uh, using props like hand handcuffs and whips, uh, being blindfolded, making a sex tape, recording your sexual activity, watching others use the restroom, watching your spouse use the restroom, wearing each other's underwear, oral sex, anal sex, unholy, abominable animal possessions during sex, sex or sex acts that takes place uh, in the marriage bed other than the missionary positions, that is man on top, any other sexual position is a abomination and such abominable things that defile the marriage bed sex during a woman's monthly periods and menstruation that is an occultic initiation if you ever do that you automatically have sold your soul to witches and warlocks that are watching and waiting to have your soul you are you are trapped unless you repent my brother, my sister, giving into the perverse wishing of a disobedient husband. 
or a disobedient wife, you are committing an act of idolatry against God. It's not you are obeying your husband, but you are involving in idolatry. He wants you to bow in front of Baal and you are bowing in front of Baal. He wants you to bow in front of Ashtaroth and you are bowing in front of Ashtaroth. Or she wants you to bow in front of Venus and Aphrodite and Kali and Durga. And you are bowing down in front of all of these demons in your sex. Because you are bowing down or you are trying to please her in the bed. You are committing idolatry and adultery against a holy God. If you have a medical condition that does not permit you to be on top of a woman. Or if you have issues like you are overweight. Please take it to the Lord in prayer. I will not address issues like that on this platform. I cannot be responsible for anyone's soul nor change anything that he has strictly advised me to speak about. Please take it to the Lord in prayer and let the Holy Spirit guide you. The Bible says in Proverbs 5, 18 and 19, Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth. As a loving deer, a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times. And at all times, may you be enraptured with her love. People mostly think that when we say don't do this and don't do that. And they say, well, there's no fun anymore. The component of enjoying each other is removed. That is because that is how you have been taught all these years. This perverseness is okay. And you don't even know what the sacredness of holy union is. Sacredness of holy sex is. Because you really cannot even get excited. That's how perverse the demonic realm has taken human beings to and Christians fall bait. Millions of Christians fall bait for this. The Holy Scriptures give permission to a husband to love, to kiss, to fondle, hold his wife, caress his wife's body, including her chest, bosom, back, abdomen, thighs, hands, face. It's all permissive. Make sure that it is not offensive to your spouse, but it's all permissive. Your body is hers and hers is yours, but do not involve in anything that is offensive to the Lord. Make sure that you're not using your body as witchcraft. I would not let you have sex with me because you did not clean the dishes. I will not let you have sex with me because you did not do the laundry or you did not mow the lawn or you did not fix my car or you did not send money to my parents. All of that is witchcraft manipulation as well. If you are a wife, you are indebted to have a healthy sexual relationship with your husband. Do not deprive them of what they need. Pastor Ola Fejo has gone into great detail about why a man should be facing the woman and why a man should be on top of the woman. And all of those components are discussed by him in his videos. So please listen to that. I'm not going to go into great depths on that. 1 Corinthians 7 verses 2 onwards says, Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render it unto the wife. Do benevolence, likewise also the wife, unto her husband. The wife has no power over her own body, but the husband, and the husband hath no power over his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not to one another, except be it with consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together that Satan does not tempt you for your inconsistency.